Αλλά φυσικά δεν μπορούσα να έμπαιτα και δεν μου τελεύω. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us here today. It has been an amazing journey. Um, we have had this 10-day uh, event. Um, a few of you participated in parts of the event. Um, it was really exciting for us to work um, with our visitors. Uh, Joel and Kevin, who came all the way from Zurich to explore the possibilities of the uh, ceramics extruder. Um, it's something very new for us as well. It has been an experimental process. Um, a walkthrough through uh, to what we have done uh, during the past two weeks. Um, we have had the opportunity, the first day, to have an introduction to this uh, workshop, to this event, through um, presentations by local artists. Um, Melinda Guta, who is here with us, thank you very much for your contribution. And Mr. Vasos Dimitriou and Susanna Petri, in collaboration with uh, Kevin and Joel, as well with uh, Thinker Makerspace, um, special thanks to Stratis, who developed uh, <laughs> the, the and to all the team who work with us. Special thanks to the Itzika group as well. Sorry? Yeah, and I was going to say, of course. <laughs> Calm down. Special thanks to the Itzika group and Starts, uh, who were working with us throughout this process. Um, we had the opportunity to have a two-day trip around Cyprus to collect information uh, in an attempt to map our locality around uh, the subject of clay. So we had the opportunity to visit traditional craftsmen in Kornos and in Fini, and uh, more contemporary artists in uh, the area of Larnaca, like um, Mr. Vasos Dimitriou that I mentioned before, and Mr. Fotos and Evstathios. And um, we had the opportunity as well to have a trip in Mitzero and Pini as well and collect our own materials and minerals and be, be able to explore the possibilities of how this can be used uh, in, collabor in uh, combination with contemporary, te contemporary technologies uh, like the CNC extruder. Um, I believe that this is just the beginning of this process. Um, 
we have a whole journey beginning after this whole experimentation. It was very interesting for us to also explore the possibilities of how we can use local materials. And uh, we have already um, tried to use um, paints, uh, natural paints, for uh, the objects that were created with the CNC extruder. And uh, today we have the opportunity to have with us uh, Mr. Jan Ioannis Viridis, who is a chemical engineer from the Technical University of Cyprus. So today we will have a more scientific approach and understand um, the clay mineral uh, material. And he will explain to us the possibilities in a more scientific uh, term. Um, thank you very much for coming here thank with us today. Um, so, uh, Mr. Yannis is going to have a short... Yannis, uh, Yannis. <laughs> Yannis. Yannis is going to uh, uh, have a short presentation. Feel free throughout the process if you feel like you want to ask any questions um, to raise your hand and uh, ask Yannis uh, for any clarification or something that uh, you might want to ask. And um, we want this to be more of like a conversation process. So to you, Jan Mies, thank you. What is this? Mm -hmm. Should I give it? your microphone, you can allow me. Yes. Okay. So again, again, everyone, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you all uh, for being here, and thank you, Marie, Stella, Theopisti, and Andri for the invitation. Uh, I don't know, I understand most of you, you are an artist, so I hope that you will not get bored, but feel free to ask me questions. And uh, the purpose of my presentation is to find common ground to initiate a collaboration. So this is a, you can say, this is a brainstorming event, presentation. So feel free to ask, to interrupt, and when things are getting too chemical, we are going to increase our speed. So I'm working on the Department of Chemical Engineering at the Cyprus University of Technology. I'm the head of environmental engineering laboratory. Basically, I'm uh, dealing with laboratory experiments and trying to clean industrial wastewater using different techniques, domestic wastewater, and a very trendy topic that is CO2 capture and utilization. It's another uh, area of my research interest. And uh, apart from this, I'm also focused on the phosphorus recovery. Phosphorus is for fertilized uh, production. So this clay presentation, it's not directly related with my research, in, with my research uh, but because it is based in the field of my research, I can present to you what is, in, uh, what is going on in this field. So basically, clay is a nature, a nature material of very fine texture, usually plastic when wet, hard when the comp compact when uh, dry, consists mainly of fine mineral particles then less than four microns. Basically, it consisted of silicon oxide, this is, and it consists of aluminum oxide. So, depends on the, this silicon oxide, this tetrahydron and this octahydron aluminum oxide, uh, basically it's uh, making covalent bond to each other and based on this covalent bond, we have a different mineral, different uh, clay. So, as you can see here, here is a one type of clay that we have the tetrahydron silicon oxide and the octahydron uh, aluminum oxide. This is another type of uh, clay. And based on this uh, structure, as I told you before, we have the different type of clay. And basically, if someone asks you what is uh, clay consisted of, basically it's consisted of silicon, 
and al silicon oxide and aluminum oxide. Just in case that you go to the millionaire or <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> So basically, uh, there are different techniques for uh, removal of wastewater. Wastewater, as you know, consisted of polluted contaminants, heavy metal. One way, there are several ways, but we're going to focus on the adsorption. In the adsorption, we have, as you can see here, a liquid. You can have a here is liquid that is very pollu polluted. And if you, okay, the, actually, you have to imagine that it's polluted. And actually, it's Zivania. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so this is a polluted water, and in case that you put some powder inside, uh, adsorption takes place. So adsorption, the polluted compounds, not the water, bind on the surface of the particle, so then the um, wastewater is getting treated, basically. So this is a common technique, and it's called adsorption, as you, hear, as you can see here. So basically, in the adsorption, you have a wastewater, dirty water is going through a column here, and then is the column, the water and the particle is being absorbed on the particles, and then the water is coming out clean. And as you can see here, during the adsorption, the contaminants are being bind on the surface, on the pore surface of the clay. So this is the properties, this is the characteristic of the clay that make, make the, this suitable for adsorption. It has a specific, high specific surface area. So yes, the clay has specific surface area. So yes, I need to. I don't know. Are you from here? Yeah. Yes. Basically, this is a one way that you can treat a dye wastewater. It's a wastewater that produced from the factories that makes paints or clothes. So basically, if you use this kind of clay material, it's very cheap compared to other type of material. So this is the, uh, there are some uh, information from, preview, from uh, several studies that say the efficiency is around 99%. So have in mind that this type of clay that you may work have this kind of properties. So in order the, some group in chemical engineering to increase the efficiency, they just uh, add activated carbon or they add other type of liquid so they make the properties of this kind of clay even more reactive. So this is, this is basically some group of chemical engineering that we do. We try to modify the clay in order to increase its properties and there are different techniques, pretreatment pre with acid, pretreatment with sodium hydroxide, you can make hydrogel. I will not go in details, but the, the main uh, reason for that this kind of material works is because it has, has high specific surface area and also has a um, reactive site here. As you can see, there are several reactive sites. There are some metals that they are ions that they can attract some uh, negative uh, ions and they can bind. There are, there are different, there are different uh, interactions that can take, play, take place. They can take physical adsorption or chemical adsorption that you have a new uh, reaction. So this is the same content, context. Apart from the organic contaminants, you can treat heavy metal with the addition of clay. So the metals, because they are ions, they have positive or negative ions, they bind with the opposite ions in the clay. Or they, or they physically absorb. This is some studies about the physical, this is some studies that they show that the clay, different type of clay, 
They have absorbed different types of metals. There are different phenomena that they take place. So another type of, uh, so this is, the, this is the commercial adsorption that take place where I show you before. But apart from this, there are some more natural ways of treating uh, wastewater. This is called constructed wetlands. Basically, the wastewater is, this is a plastic, this is seal, this is a seal uh, underneath. In the bottom, there is a plastic liner. Here you can have uh, some sands, you have uh, plants, and the wastewater is coming through this and is passing out. This is called free surface. When the wastewater is going through the sand, it's called subsurface, and when it's going vertical, it's called vertical uh, constructed wetland. So why the clay can have an important role here, I will explain you. This is the, as I told you before, the constructed wetlands. So the wastewater pass through this kind of um, surface and it's been treated because of the absorption, biodegradation. And several studies, by the way, this is the constructed wetland in Cyprus. We have a project on this called Domus, it was quite successful. If you ever go to Holetria, it's in Paphos, very nice place. So, and here is the role of the clay. If you put under, if you put here clay that is quite reactive, they found that the activity of the system is increasing. So the absorption that I told you before, you can see it here that it's getting the performance of the system uh, very high because of the activity of the clay. So, can, can I, uh, yes, yes. Does clay uh, have these filtering properties forever or does it come a point that it, it can absorb the maximum it can absorb and then it becomes like toxic itself and unusable. Thank you for the question. Yes, as you say, uh, the, any material has a saturation constant. So yes, it will get saturated. It will not uh, be reactive. So the thing is, if it gets saturated, what we are doing next? So if we have a commercial uh, material, it could be expensive to regenerate. Usually you'd, you use heat to regenerate. So if it's this, this type, if it's cheap, if it's a cheap um, clay, you can uh, seal it somewhere or you can, um, you can put heat in order to remove the adsorbents. But uh, definitely the saturation is uh, not a barrier a parameter that we have to take in consideration. Okay. Again, on, on this, just to, uh, so in this, if it's released by heat, is it released again out in the environment? Yes, 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 exactly. Mm. But we prefer instead of, yes, it's going to environment, and, but we prefer instead of going to the water and to our system to be converted to carbon dioxide. So that's a good point uh, because, as you know, the mass balance, if you have carbon, it's going to carbon, but it will not be in our system, in the aqua system, in the fish, in the lakes, it will go to the atmosphere. Definitely will, will interfere differently, but on the other hand, there are different ways, as I will show you before, that you can convert this carbon dioxide to other type of compounds or you can store it underneath, there are different uh, scientific approaches. So it's, that means that uh, the, the, the uh, polluted metals are only trapped, they're not disappearing per se, uh, with the, there, it's just that they're waiting to be released in a way? Yeah, for the heavy metal it's a bit different because for the organic compounds, they can be, uh, with the heat, they can be released in the atmosphere. The, with the heavy metal, they just been stuck on the particles. 
So then you can control it, you can seal it in a more controlled environment instead of to releasing the environment. In a way, you control the pollution, you manage the pollution better. Okay, this is the constructed weight light, as, as I told you before. So this is an interesting system, and this can be a... We can find some common ground, some ideas based on this to collaborate. I will show you also later on. I will go through the, another kind of system. It's called microbial fuel cell. This is an adult. This is a cathode. cathode and here we have semi-permeable membrane. This is very important because... Uh, these membranes allow only the protons to go through. So we have generation of electricity because of the conversion. Here you have wastewater, it's being biodegraded, it's going, the electron is going from the anode to the cathode, and the proton is going through, so you have electricity here. So another type of microbial fuel cell that can be combined with constructed wetlands, it's called the plant microbial fuel cell. So you have an anode, you have a cathode, and the cathode should be exposed close to the air, and you have a closed circuit. This is an experimental uh, project. Uh, this has not been still, it has not been implemented full scale. Anyway, and also with this kind of system, you can have electricity, basically. There are some kind of papers that they say, plant microbial fuel cell-based energy harvester system for cell powder to IoT applications. So it can be a self-sustained system, basically, this kind of systems. Why I'm telling you here this? Because in a recent study, they have used a clay here, a clay as a proton exchange membrane. I have to search, I have to, I have to find why this clay allow, the, uh, I have to search better to find the explanation, but putting clay on the, um, on the perimeter here uh, makes the this system work. So you have a cathode, a clay, and an adon, anode. So this is a, an area that we can collaborate with Marius and uh, Stella, because as I told you, and Stratos, because you have a 3D printer, so you can direct the surface, the porosity maybe, and the dimension of the clay. So we can do some experiment here. Later on we can discuss about this. So I'm finishing basically, and I will tell you about a bit about the carbon dioxide removal. There are the clay, because of the specific surface area, apart from the organic contaminants, apart from the heavy metal, if it comes to contact with carbon dioxide, can absorb it. So this is another type of application. They, they, they use clay for volatile organic compound removal, carbon dioxide, methane, and other compounds. For example, uh, kaolinite, that this is a type of the chemical compound of the kaolinite, has a very good properties for removal of carbon dioxide. And there are some studies, there are some uh, research papers that they say that one way to remove the carbon dioxide is to put them in the well underneath, or in the, surf, or in the sea, or in the um, rocks underneath. So basically, in case that you have a... A reservoir, or you have a cap rock that is uh, consisted of clay. This can be a solution to put the carbon dioxide to expose the carbon dioxide to this kind of clay. You have an absorption here. I will not get in details. And this is a way to store the to put the carbon dioxide back. This is the research in this field about the carbon dioxide and storage. So. This is the field of uh, clay in terms of um, water removal, carbon dioxide that I have told you. And thank you very much. <laughs> Feel free to ask any questions. Yes? When you talk about clay, when you talk about clay, I'm just holding like this, isn't it? 
Uh, what state is the clay? Are we talking about wet clay? Are we talking about dry powder? The picture you showed showed like uh, dried pellets. Yeah, uh, are they fired so it's ceramic? Because I'm guessing each state has different qualities as well. Thank you for the question. Mm. Uh, we're talking about mostly uh, clay that is uh, preheated. So it's already... It's not fired, but it's, it's dry, let's yeah, say. Yeah, it's dry, but also it depends from the temperature. It depends on the clay. But definitely it goes through, it has gone through a heating procedure in order to remove the moisture and to make it more okay. compact. Otherwise, if you expose it to water, it will react, I guess. But then it's inserted into wastewater. Yes, yeah, I, you prepare it and then you insert it, yes. Okay. But in, the, in this kind of, there are also some natural clay that they may have this kind of properties that are already dry. Depends on the clay, basically. Okay. Thank you for the question. That is already. Then is it less polluted than other areas because of those properties? And for example, if you yes, if you have a polluted, let's say, water here or a source of wastewater, and it's going underneath in the um, storage mm -hmm. water in the underneath in the ground in the water uh, level that is there about. If you have here clay, you are gonna have uh, adsorption filtration. So it can uh, really protect, basically, the treatment. So yes, in that case, uh, if it's, uh, they are naturally and uh, it's quite reactive, it can also protect the environment, yes. So, um, yeah, yes. Um, uh, mm -hmm. right. Right. <laughs> oh, right. Um, in the example you have showed with um, uh, using uh, um, the clay as a filter of water and then you had showed plants, yes, uh, yes. bark growing plants, I was wondering, um, uh, first of all, whether or not the, let's say, the, the, the toxic material that exists in the ground finds its way through the plants and through the um, vegetation and if it mm. eventually comes back into nature, that's one question. And the other question in that experiment, um, what kind of pol pollution was there in the water? Was it toxic materials or organic materials? Yeah, yes, yes, thank you for the question. Uh, we are talking about this figure, correct? In this figure, the main purpose, the main uh, outcome of the experiment is to produce energy from wastewater. So, was another picture? Ah, here? Or here? Here? Or here? This, the, okay, the, the, okay, uh, this is, yes, yeah, as I understand, uh, the, the water is going out, uh, what, what was the question? Is, uh, was, the question was whether or not the, uh, let's say the, 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 the toxic or polluted material that goes through the ground manages to find its way in the, ve in the vegetation. Because yes, 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 he, this, the, this plant is not a plant that we eat. It's, it's not edible, it's a, a reed, reed, okay. reed, yes. So they, we can make this, uh, we can use it in anaerobic digestion or we can give it to the animals or make compost. But um, usually the, the main uh, strategy that the polluted is detoxified is not because it is accumulating plants, it's because of the bacteria here in the rhizosphere and because of the adsorption. Mm -hmm. So that's the main mechanism. And because in the water here, we have also um, uh, bacteria. So the bacteria biodegrade the wastewater. So mostly the, water, the plants accumulate, just filter the water. Okay. So there is not so much danger because of this. Let's say uh, toxicity or what kind of uh, pollution is there in the water that goes in? Yeah, is it this, organic material? This or? type of uh, system, uh, it can be used for the treatment of domestic wastewater. Okay. Toilet, uh, uh, from the washing machine, but also has been used also for the industrial uh, wastewater. But 
for rural areas and for villages that they don't have a sewage system and they, have a, they cannot afford to have a, elect a system that, uh, gener uh, that consumes electricity, this is an ideal system. Mm. I, uh, they have it a lot in, um, in some Mediterranean countries, for example, Spain, Italy, not so much in Cyprus, not so much in Greece. In Cyprus, this is the first one. Uh, they have in, uh, in France, yes, uh, the, in USA they have this kind of system because you have to have a lot of available land mm. and you have some problem because of the uh, mosquito, so you can put some fish here to eat the mosquito. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's true. Yes? I'm glad that you are interested in... <laughs> On this, uh, I know of examples in Paphos again, in, a, in Paphos areas and villages, that they use this technique. They have been using it for many, many years, uh, exactly for the sewage water. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, it's, um, there is a tradition of this. It's, uh, yes, yes. But maybe it's not uh, as refined as this one. Uh, but uh, it's interesting that it's been around. In Cyprus, basically, in some... Uh, yes, I mean, they, they put plant, you mean? Yes. Yes. I'm not uh, aware. Maybe because they do it in a house level. No, no, uh, no that's true. I mean, maybe it was not so um, standardized, let's say. But this is for the whole village. So okay, this is the whole more uh, following the protocol. And also in this kind of uh, system, it's important the surface underneath to be um, sealed. Uh, sealed to it, they have a plastic liner. Uh, otherwise, the water can go through the ground. Yes? Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a two-part question also related to one of the, the, the graphics. So here you show a soil root layer. Could you clarify the distinction between clay and soil? And I think in one of the, the one of the last graphic you show us microorganism and bacteria here, here. Uh, and yeah here. So is and you you explain the composition of the clay. Yes. But microorganisms are also part of it, if I'm not mistaken. So what is the role of those microorganisms uh, in the clay as well? Okay. This is this is. This is a bit different system. Uh, here, uh, I will just go through. The, here is a clay, in the, and this is a sand. So there is a, they, they use the sand here in order to be able for the reeds to get planted here and to have a stable support. So this is for the rhizosphere, and this is for the adsorption, basically. And the microbes is uh, through this system. They are everywhere. The microbes basically close to the water. Closer there, you can find higher quantities in the water instead of, but they can do biofilm here. So microbes, different microbes are everywhere. Now we have techniques that we can identify which microbes, what are they doing, and the function of each group. Uh, I don't know if I answered you. Yeah, I, I was just because here you show that clay is also in the root layer. No, here basically, the clay, yes. Yeah. Okay, maybe this was, a, I, I have, uh, maybe this was a mistake. I shouldn't put this arrow, I should put it he, uh, here. So I have confused you, sorry for this. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> The soil it doesn't have this kind of surface, specific surface area that can absorb. Soil, it's more, has contained more organic, basically. Has much more organic. Uh, on the other hand, clay is inorganic. Doesn't have any material that can be, let's say, yes, that contains carbon. Basically, clay is this. Is the silicon... Uh, Silicon oxide and aluminum oxide, inorganic. The people that they remember the chemistry. Can I ask you something? Yeah. But, but there is some bacteria. Still. Yes, because the bacteria can attach to the to the inorganic. The bacteria can attach to the inorganic and the organic layer. Okay. For example, today we have a clay extruder here. 
We have a machine here that uh, basically we can prepare the material and then extrude it. Has, has there been any studies also in your previous uh, slide with the, with the plants? It was Colocasia esculenta, so I expect that's Colocasia actually and not reeds. <laughs> Uh, so, Colocasia esculenta also, the, well, for those that don't know Colocasia, is uh, taro. It's, it's like, it's, it's, so it's, it's a really starchy material. Are you talking about this? No. no. Before? This? No. So, yeah, Colocasia esculenta ah. is Colocasia. Ah, ah, ah. So what I, I haven't was, noticed that actually. <laughs> 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 so, what I would say, since, since you have a finite amount of, of what you can capture here, and then this cannot be eaten, yes? Ca cannot be eaten, yes. You cannot be eaten. So, has there been any studies of, since we binded in the material the, the, anything toxic? Has there been any studies of what to do with that waste afterwards, and maybe we could do like useful objects with them, like if we could granulate with this or with with, with any the of the two, because both can be granulated. Have you seen any researchers no, granulating it and extruding it, and for example binding it in the same way a tree captivates carbon, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then you have a piece of wood, and then you make a furniture of it, but carbon is in it. Uh, for this, that waste could be again granulated and extruded and be made. Yeah, 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 and be made into a useful object. Have you seen anything like uh, this? Before? I have actually. I haven't seen. I haven't seen. But because it's a relatively cheap and low cost, yeah. I mean, it's discarded. Uh, it's discarded. And what's the point to take this that is already polluted? And because it's relatively cheap, why not to take a new one? The question is. <laughs> Where is it dumped? Uh, that's a good question. That's what uh, I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's a good would, since it's polluted. Okay, I will like tell you. I will tell you. Problem and moving it, it on the side. There are two ways. If it's polluted, what yeah. they do usually with the activated carbon, for example, this. In a, the way to, po if it's polluted, they expose it to heat, and the carbon dioxide is released. This and is the one way. The second way is they seal it. They put concrete around and they, that's it. Like you're so doing a nuclear, like, a, like nuclear waste. Uh, the, the best way, because the best way is because uh, they just put, uh, they expose it to heat and the pollution is going out or they just put it in a, a, in a store or the, the trouble with making a, a utilitarian object out of this type of clay is that you need to heat it, so you, you do release the toxicity of it. Why heat it? Uh, but you need to fire it to make it into something useful. Mm. That's the problem. It might not be fired. It might be bisked. If it's bisked, it's again fired up to 800 degrees. Uh, not bisked at all, it's going to crumble and fall. Sure. Uh, 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 Yeah, but it could be a pot, a, f a flower pot, or it could be an ornamental thing. From, from my perspective, it could be useful if, you, if we have uh, the equipment or the strategy or the approach to modify the properties of the clay, the specific surface area, the size, the, if it's compact, this can have impact on the work, on the performance. So if we had, let's say, a pipe system made out of clay or uh, like a reservoir that the water passes. Like for example, you, ha you brought this with you, uh, you pass water through. Yes, this is a membrane. A yes. membrane, okay. So if I build something useful, but I can pass water through it by vacuum, yeah, yeah, they I could captivate on an object, let's say, the, all the pollutants. And then keep it after it's been cooked. So if I have cooked clay, can it do that? Yeah, actually there is another field that they do ceramic membrane based on clay. So these kind of membranes are more robust. Okay. And good. they they also but they are more expensive. And there are research in this field. Because this is cheaper, I think uh, it's easier to handle this. But the ceramic or any type of ceramic filter 
has potential, can have a potential for water treatment. So just some sort, yes? Uh, in front of... No, no. After this. No, no. After. After this. <laughs> this is a square yes. thing that this... Okay, this yeah. Okay. Yes. Here it seems that uh, you said, if I understood correctly, that it doesn't release the clay. It is in that square. Yes, yes. It's the, not released. It, this, it's, the clay is uh, uh, here on the surface. Yes, but this, uh, let's say in archaeological sites, we have pipes that are like this, and they are thousands of years, and they are active. Uh -huh. uh, so they are... It is uh, working. It's, okay, this is system here, the clay, acts as a proton exchange. Uh, it's, uh, this, uh, it's, uh, this system is to produce electricity, basically, and this allows some of the protons to pass through. So in the archaeological site, just to understand what they found... They... It is pipes. Sewage, for sewage. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So, <laughs> sewage pipes. <laughs> okay. But they're ceramics. Yeah, they have a very robust properties, yes. and that's why we found them in the bottom of the sea, and they still, uh, yes. yes, without Thank any you. damage. Thank yeah. you. While we're on this uh, diagram, so here I'm wondering, is the clay and the microorganism are both working in that, combination to be a depollutant? Yeah, right? I will explain. This is, okay, this is a bit different system from here. This is a different system. This is a different system. Here in this system, the bacteria are active here in the anode, basically. They are very, the bacteria are everywhere, but here in the anode, they are most active because they oxidize product and the ele electron pass through, okay? So here on the clay, the clay acts as a proton exchange membrane here. See, so this kind of membrane commercially is very expensive. It costs around $2,500. Whereas the clay is very cheap. So um, this, is another, uh, uh, this is another way to make the proton exchange membrane because this kind of proton exchange membrane is the main barrier for the commercialization mm -hmm. of this microbial fuel cell. But so it would help, and not only it's cheaper, but would it activate the microorganism more because it's no, clay? In no, in that system, no. In this system, it will act mostly as a proton exchange membrane. In, in your examples, you have been talking about referring to clay. This is clay that it's fabricated with, with specific um, Properties. components. It's, it's, not, it's not naturally found. Yes, yes. It's earth. starting from a raw clay. And because they say in that paper, novel clay separator, Probably they fabricate it, they change its property, they heat it in a specific temperature, they cool it in another temperature, so they make it uh, suitable for uh, as a product exchange membrane, basically. What is the life cycle of the bacteria? Which one? The, this, this, actually, this is not my own study. And and this is a research study. Basically, as I guess, uh, clay is very robust, uh, can withstand uh, um, different uh, extreme conditions. So I think that it's going to be robust. It's going to be kind of a problem. Things that may be some uh, kind of uh, compounds, they may block it. But in general, it will, not, it will last. However, this kind of research under development, we cannot be sure. I mean, we have to read more. <laughs> Can I ask about the saturation again? Yes, so, saturation. For example, in this pot, can, would it be workable for years or we're talking years or we're talking weeks? Uh, okay, the anode here is getting oxidized. Mm -hmm. So you have to replace it. Mm -hmm. So this is the main uh, barrier that you have to overcome. This anode is getting oxidized. It will be corroded. But the clay will be... Yes, the clay will not 
have any kind of damage or can withstand different conditions. Here in that kind of system, the anode is the problem. The anode, and you know, okay, the proton exchange membrane is very expensive, as I said to you before. Okay. Uh, I have one more question. On, on <laughs> Thank you. On okay. the relation, because I was trying to think um, uh, about inoculating bacteria into clay um, to also see the different behaviors of the clay. Is, would that work as a combo of also potentially like making the clay work uh, with more um, uh, efficiency yeah, as well? This, in this, yes, 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 thank you for the question. Basically in these systems, in this system that I have described the adsorption, in this system, the thing is if you put bacteria here, and you have organic compounds here, and the bacteria will have more available substrate. So this could be a good idea. So because you direct the compounds here, you have the bacteria here, and the, done will be, uh, the work will be done easier for the bacteria. So yes, you can have specific bacteria that they oxidize or reduce metal, or they biodegrade. The, in, not in that way, in, another, in my field we use some uh, material that they have specific surface area, they inoculate with bacteria and we put them in bioreactor. So we increase the population of the microorganisms and the type of microorganisms that we want. So this enhances the process. But uh, it has potential, I think. Good. Any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time I see a chicken in the air. I'm sure you get tension on <laughs> Thank you very much, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you as well for the um, questions and your interest. Usually in my student, I don't have so much questions. <laughs> so you can join my class. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yes, that's question, Andrew. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And then, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm το κλίμα από το κομπαγί εδώ πέρα.